Howard here with Hey Bulldog from the Beatles, another uh, riff-based song from uh, John Lennon. And uh, this is a really cool riff. It's a really cool song, of course. And uh, I got several requests for it, so I thought I'd just get around to finally doing it. Aside from it being such a cool tune, uh, one of the highlights for me is George Harrison's guitar solo. It's just, it's right up there with fixing a hole, you know, those kind of solos. Kind of unusual, slightly quirky, and uh, very George Harrison. It's based on a lot of double stops, which I'll get into. Uh, but first, let's get into that main riff and the, uh, the structure of the song. <laughs> So let's talk about just that much right there. That could be played a little bit more <laughs> staccato, but I'll get into that as we get into the lesson. So the main riff, which you can see on the screen with the tab, is played like so. <laughs> And that is played three times after the piano intro, of course, and then we're right into the verse, the chords on the verse, which is really driven by the piano more than the guitar, but you hear the guitar kind of in the background there. But I'll explain those chords for you. You can kind of back off the distortion a little bit for that part. Um, it sounds probably a little bit tighter that way. And the first chord in line right here is a B7. And as you can see, I've got the full B7 chord mapped out for you with the, uh, the chord diagram. But really what you're trying to do is play maybe the first three or four notes of the chord. You want to mute back here and you want it to be very staccato if you're trying to kind of emulate uh, the piano part, okay? <laughs> To an F sharp minor, which again is fully mapped out. But just play it very staccato, maybe the top three or four strings, okay? Whatever it takes to kind of make it sound cool. So you play that twice, B7 to F sharp minor, and then we move to A. F sharp minor, E, and then E7. Now, the second go around, George tosses in a little riff there, but if you want to just play it straight like the recording, the first go around, you can just play it like that. So you can see that the second time around, I went back to the A, to the F sharp minor, and then to the B7. So uh, let's map all of that out again. So for the verse, we've got B7 to F sharp minor twice. A, F sharp minor. Back to A, F sharp minor, B7. And then we're into uh, another verse. So let's talk about that little fill that George puts in there, which sounds uh, really cool. Now, where you're going to catch that fill is right here. A, F sharp minor, E, E7. Hit the E7 one time and then play the little fill. Back to the uh, B7 at the tail end of that. So let me play that for you nice and slow so you can hear exactly how it goes. And 
there you have it. And then we go into the uh, cool kind of ascending chromatic part. And I'll show you a couple of different ways to play this, okay? Now, probably the best way to play this, especially if you're playing with a good, healthy dose of uh, distortion, is to just play it in power chord shape, okay? And again, everything's very staccato. You can loosen it up if you want to make it more guitaristic, but I'm just kind of focusing on sort of emulating the staccato uh, jabs on the piano. Uh, but it's a power chord at the seventh fret, a B power chord. And what you're going to do is just the exact same idea, slightly muting and popping the chord to make it nice and staccato. And this note on the ninth fret on the A string is going to climb up chromatically. While this note stays at the seventh fret. Again, nice and slow. Then simply take that down to the next set of strings, the A and the D string, and do the same thing. So together we have pretty cool and I will show you another way to play that in just a second and basically what happens is uh, you can move from a B power chord to an E power chord before you go back to the riff and I'll talk about how George and Paul re-engage that riff uh, so you could just go like this if you want to that is totally fine to do and will sound really cool but what's really cool about that moving from the B to the E before you go back to the riff is Lennon sings at flat five so it's really cool if you want to just play that on guitar kind of just a little addition there but it sounds really cool or at least play the flat five uh, before you go to the E that sounds pretty cool as well but if you do want to do that you can see from the E power chord I went down to D now one of the things you might have noticed and this is what I mentioned a second ago is how George and Paul re-enter that riff once they played it straight out the gate at the intro there's always that hammer on that little uh, variation <laughs> Just each time they re-enter it out of whatever part they're coming off of, okay? Just a quick note there that sounds pretty cool. So let me play that again. So I mentioned another way to uh, play that ascending part, the uh, uh, with a little bit cleaner tone, you'll definitely want to clean up the tone a little bit for this. But if you're playing with another player or you just want it to sound a little bit fuller, again, you'll need a cleaner tone, but you can play it like so by playing a B minor bar chord. And then what I'm doing is placing this finger on the second fret on the A string and the D and the G string are open. Then lay your first finger down at the first fret on the G string. Then bring your ring finger to the second fret on the G string. So we get this. So you get uh, that extra string in there and a little bit fuller sound. And then you can move to an E minor chord and ascend up the open B string. While you're holding down that E minor. And back 
to the riff, and I played the uh, flat five there instead of there. To an E power chord, if you like, and then you're set up for the riff. And so on and so forth. Now, uh, let's cover the octave to that riff uh, that George uh, overdubbed and laid down, okay? So after you play that ascending chromatic section uh, the first time around, so once again you hear the main guitar come in and play uh, that intro riff down here. Uh, but George adds an octave to that, which is played like. And that's really cool. He's got those little subtleties in there that make it slightly different. Uh, you can play the whole thing using the open B string, but to my ears, it sounds like he's probably fretting that because it's just got a little bit more meat to it. Uh, but uh, here's the tab up on the screen and the riff nice and slow. And you can use whatever fingers are uh, most comfortable for you to play that riff, okay? Now before we talk about George's uh, very intriguing solo, uh, let's talk about the very tail end of the song. We've got all the parts now. Uh, but they're looping it between a B7 and an F-sharp minor for the long drawn fade out with all the craziness that's going on, right? So they're just playing back and forth. Just B7 to F-sharp minor in a loop. And the uh, riff crisscrosses across the strings. Crisscrosses across the strings. I'll show you what I mean. We play the riff, the first part of the riff, normally and then the second part of the riff we move to the top two strings but you notice there's an open a string after that note instead of going there which you can see on the tab so that just becomes a nice loop okay Now, George has a very bright tone here, uh, much brighter than what I'm using, actually, and uh, a pretty good dose of distortion as well. And it sounds like he may have done a couple of drop-ins or overdubs on it as well. It's really hard to tell because of the way it's all mixed together. But the solo is built almost entirely on double stops, okay? So the first section or the first segment of the solo is played like this. <laughs> trickier to play than it seems, okay? Like I said, there's a lot of double stops there. So let me take you through that section of the solo first, nice and slow, and then we'll get into uh, the remainder. So it starts out with a double stop on the seventh fret, which you can see on the tab. You can play that with your ring finger if you want to. It doesn't really matter either way, but you definitely want to employ alternate picking for that. And then you pop down to the uh, B and the uh, G string at the fourth fret. And then he plays this very cool lick. Which you can see on the tab. And then grab the B and the G string. And slide down to the second fret. So now we have... Then come back and then hammer and pick again. So we've got Now he's going to play that again with just a couple of subtle differences to it. Start out the exact same way and he adds an extra little pick up there and you'll hear that on the recording. And probably the best way to approach that is up-down. 
Up, down, I think is best. And he comes back the exact same way, but just with that little pickup note in there. And then you want to kind of slide into this one. Uh, and that can be a little bit awkward depending on which fingers you choose, but basically he's just sort of sliding into it from where he's at. And then, and as you can see, it's a lot of uh, alternate picking to pull that off. So those two together, nice and slow. Now the next section of the solo is um, sort of mapped out the way the first half of the solo is, where he's got sort of a melodic idea and then he just kind of embellishes it or plays it slightly different each time. So this next part is played like so. A lot of double stops, right? Just predominantly double stops. Uh, so what's important about this section is where he starts this first phrase. He comes off of the previous thing that he played. He comes off of that and then he enters this part on the second beat of the measure. One, two, and three, and four, and... And so this is a lot of double stopping as I mentioned before. And I play it with these middle fingers first so I can do a comfortable hammer on down here. But you can see that I'm on the third fret on the B string and the fourth fret on the G string, and you slide it up. Down strokes for this, I think, are just fine. So that's a hammer on right there. And then he basically outlines an E7 chord. But he doesn't hold them down as a chord, he doesn't let the notes ring together. He separates them out rather nicely, starting with a slide. Whatever fingers you want to use is totally fine. And you just carry that all the way from the 4th fret all the way to the 12th fret. Alternate picking is probably best for that. So he basically comes back and plays the same thing again, just like he did with the first section of the solo but with subtle differences, a different tag at the end and so on. Uh, the first thing to note here though is unlike the previous riff where he entered on the second beat, he enters on the upbeat of one. One and two and three and four and... Other than that, the riff is basically the same, right? And then he plays this. Double stop again, lots of double stops. Uh, the fourth fret on the B string and the G string. And then he kind of slides into this. So here is the uh, whole solo played in its entirety. to the main body of the song. So there you go, Hey Bulldog from the Beatles uh, with another uh, very intriguing solo from uh, George Harrison. I hope you enjoyed the lesson and uh, I'll see you guys again real soon.